Once upon a time, there was a group of kids, 11, 12 years old. We had a couple of grown-ups with us, too. We were out hiking in the wilderness, forest, tall trees, quiet, critters. Came up to a wild blackberry bush, picking. Mm. We wade out into a creek. The grown-ups had given us some mason jars. We we're chasing after tadpoles. Tadpoles. These turn into frogs. Sense of wonder. By the creek, we're looking for the best rock. Remember, you had to have a flat, smooth rock. You got it. Sidearm, skip, skip. Try it again and again. Skip, skip. Three, four. <laughs> We're exploring all around. Tracks. These are deer tracks over here. Wild turkey. I'm thinking this is raccoon. Look, I found a panther track. It's not a panther track, that's bobcat. No, that's panther. No, that's bobcat. So much fun. For hours. Standing there at sunset, looking out, clouds, like shredded cotton. Pink, the colors, blue, red, orange. I'm thinking, even a good painter couldn't paint that. Night begins to fall. And we hear the chorus. Crickets. Frogs start to synchronize. Occasionally hear the solo of an owl. Fireflies. Put them light up the sky. Get the mason jars out again. We're chasing after them. Catching them. Fireflies in a jar, like a miracle. We're out in the forest primeval, not wanting to be anywhere else. My Uncle Tommy's one of the grown-ups. He calls out to me, Andy, come here, I want to show you something. So I walk over to him. He takes me to a clearing in the trees. Points up the night sky. Says, that's Orion, the great hunter. See those top two stars up there? The one on the left is a little red. Those are his shoulders. And those three stars in the middle, that's Orion's belt. You know, a thousand years ago, a Native American boy about your age stood right here. He looked up. And he saw the same thing we're looking at right now. The same stars. How cool is that? Yeah, Uncle Tommy, that's pretty cool. He left me alone. He walked away. I'm standing there, mesmerized by a billion stars, surrounded by this incredible forest, being serenaded by the Critter Choir, a backpack full of tadpoles and fireflies. I'm thinking, what it must have been like to live here, be here, thousand years ago. That, that was my first communion. That was my first conscious connection to the holy. And I felt, I felt this deep sense of belonging, belonging to all that was around me. And the boundaries between me and the trees and the the space between me and the creek and even the night stars, those boundaries just melted. And when I stood looking out into infinity, looking out into infinity, I didn't feel alone. My uncle, he wanted me to know the Creator. He didn't give me a book to read, even though he could quote the good book as with the best of them. He didn't give me a set of rules to memorize. He took me out into creation, 
where I could walk in beauty, where I'd be blown away by the night sky in this incredible forest, where I could experience a connection to something bigger than myself. We were in a natural cathedral, vast, mysterious, overwhelming really, beyond human comprehension, ultimately unknowable. But what we did know is that we were on sacred ground. We were in a special place that allowed us to connect to this mystery. We were in the Holy Land. About six weeks later, I'm riding my bike home from school. And as I was prone to do from time to time, I took a detour. I wanted to go see my forest. So I pedaled, it took me a while. When I got there, it was gone. Gone. Clear cut. Stacks of trees are cut up all around. Smoldering fires where tree trunks have been burning all day. It's like surreal. I'm walking around, what is going on? I, I, I can't even hardly speak. I get on my bike, I ride around. I see this billboard that says, new shopping center, 50 stores, acres and acres of free parking, it said. I was devastated. I was 12 years old. I felt responsible. This was my forest. Who is the voice of the forest? Who's the voice of all the animals that surely died there? If not me. It had a powerful impact on me. My consciousness shifted that day. Perhaps you understand why a young man would choose to go to law school and study environmental law. Perhaps you would understand why a group of young people would be protesting and even to the point of getting arrested to try to stop mining companies from blowing the tops off the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. Maybe you would understand why a young girl would camp up in the redwood trees for months without coming down, for months, trying to stop the clear cutting of an ancient forest. Do you understand? To love everything, everywhere, you got to love something, somewhere. Our somewhere can be the special places right here. It gives us a sense of place, an identity. For example, I'm talking about Thomas Creek, just up a little past the airport, go kayaking up there. Beautiful, surrounded by cypress trees. I'm talking about up in the north side, Tiger Point, go hiking up there. You stand there 360 degrees all around, all you can see, pristine old Florida. And we know that the Native Americans, the Tamuqua, saw the same thing because archaeologists have found their bones up there. And I'm talking about fishing at sunset up at Julington Creek Preserve. Those are three places among many that have been protected in our community because of a peak experience in nature. In 1998, Mayor John Delaney, a Republican, went fishing with some friends up in Sisters Creek. Now, he'd been mayor a couple years, been in Jacksonville a long time. He'd never been up there. And when he got up there, he's surrounded by this incredible beauty, he said. It stunned him. And after a while, he quit fishing, sat down in the back of the boat. He kept saying, you got to protect this. We've got to protect this. I mean, if condos, if strip malls come in here, we'll never get it back. I've got to do something about protecting this. And as a result, on the fishing trip, the Preservation Project was founded. And over the next few years, 50,000 acres of special places were protected, set aside. And now we have the largest urban park system in America. See, uh, peak experience out in nature, that can change a life forever. It can change a community forever.
what I would like for you to think about is maybe one day soon you turn off your telephone, shut down your computer, turn off your TV, and gather up some kids, your kids, your grandkids, your neighborhood kids, and take them up to our magnificent Timaquan National Preserve where they can eat wild blackberries, chase after fireflies and tadpoles, and hear the critter choir and be dazzled by the night sky. And if you study up, you can know and tell some stories about the Tamuqua, the Native Americans who lived and moved and had their being right here on the sacred ground. So those kids can connect to something bigger than themselves, to the great mystery. So they can rest in the grace of the world, knowing that this is where they belong. Because this, right here, this is the Holy Land.